Good afternoon, class. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about how do we draw the UML diagrams for Windows Presentation Foundation uh, projects. And really, it's the same as what we've been doing all along. It's still just UML. We're still just dealing with classes. But there are some uh, new ideas that we probably need to think about in terms of our UML. So one of the first ones we really need to look at is this idea of a partial class and how that relates to UML. So with Windows Presentation Foundation, we have a partial class for our code behind. And then the other half of that class is actually generated from the XAML. So that's really the two pieces of that partial class. Now, there is no such thing as a partial class in UML. And in fact, all a partial class in .NET means is that we're putting part of our code in one file and part in another file. So it's still technically just one class. So that's what we do in uh, UML is we just create a single box uh, to represent both uh, pieces. So let's go ahead and create a class for our main window. And now we need to add the properties just like we would for any other class. So we'll jump back to the main window and we have a few private fields. So let's go ahead and add those. Um, first of all, we have an int array of operands. So we can go ahead and add that. And it is private. The type is int array. And our next one is next key overwrites which has a default value of true and is a Boolean. So next key overwrite. And yeah. And also an operation, so. which type is operation, it has a default value of operation, none. So that is all the private fields. So that's pretty straightforward. It's what we've already done. Uh, then we have the main window constructor. Now we haven't dealt a ton with constructors because all of most of the classes we've dealt with before, we didn't have a written out constructor. We were just going with the default one and we didn't feel the need to put in the, the uh, UML. Well, now we probably should. So it is a public method and has the same name, main window. And this is also parameterless, so the parameter list should be empty. And then because it's a constructor, it doesn't have a return type. So you don't put colon and then the type of return value. And let's see, we also have some event listeners. We have this on clear. Uh, and we didn't specify if it was public, protected, or private, which means it's going to be private. And it has two parameters. The first is sender, which is of type object. And the second is uh, a routed event args E. And we need a little more space for this. And its return type is void because it's not returning anything. And we can see that uh, the return type is void, e routed event args, object sender. And these other ones are also event handlers, pretty much in the same way. So on number press, and the Last one is on operator press. So oh, I guess we have two more. So on operator press follows the same pattern. And the last one is apply operation. So 
So that's our main window class. If we go back, we can see that that is in the calculator namespace. So we want to go ahead and pull out a package, calculator. to show that this is in the calculator namespace. And then we also are inheriting from window. Now window, if we hover over it, we can see it's in system.windows namespace. So this is not something that we've defined. This is something we're getting from an external library. So we're gonna treat that a little bit differently than we have some of the other things. So we'll just go ahead and create a namespace system.windows. We're gonna put a box in to represent that. And its class type is window. But because this comes from an outside namespace, we are not going to bother uh, defining the contents uh, because the, that's actually going to be defined for us elsewhere. So we can just do uh, an empty box to represent that, that space. And oops, I don't want a connector. Actually, I do want a connector. Now, main window inherits from this. So we need to show that inheritance uh, relationship that main window is a window. So we have the arrow going in the direction of the window to show that main window is a window out of the system.windows namespace. And I'm going to go ahead and move everything down so that we stay within the same page. And we really don't need all the space for window because it's pretty... <laughs> uh, not taking up a whole lot of space and that gives us our main window let's go ahead and take a look uh, at the code behind now there's a lot of stuff in this code behind for example uh, we have grids we have a text box we have all of this uh, digit buttons and technically this is all a composition relationship but if we start throwing all of these in it's going to get very very muddy and very very uh, involved very quickly uh, so it, uh, we're probably we should feel free to go ahead and just not necessarily specify all of these now in this case because we actually have something defined locally the digit button we really do kind of want to make sure that we capture that relationship so let's go ahead and take a look at our digit button class and get that one documented and then we'll do the relationship between the two so if we look at this this is pretty straightforward we have button and button is actually coming from again system.windows but this time controls namespace uh, so yeah, we have that inheritance, we have the partial class. Let's go ahead and define that. So if we jump back to our Visio, So our digit button, and we don't have any properties uh, defined for this one, and we do have a public constructor which took no parameters, if I remember correctly. Uh, no parameters, it just initializes. And then we have that relationship to the button, cla uh, button class, which is out of system.windows.controls. So let's go ahead and pull out one more namespace for system.windows.controls. And let's add our class. And again, we're not going to bother defining any content for that one. And we need our inheritance relationship, which digit button is inheriting from button. And digit button is also defined in calculator. Now that wraps us up there. Let's look at our XAML here. Notice we're not doing anything fancy there. So that's very straightforward. Um, and then the relationship between these. So main window has a number of digit buttons that it's actually composed of. 
So we're going to go ahead and mark that composition relationship. And it's composition because these are defined in the XAML and um, they stick around for the life of the main window. When the main window goes away, they go away. Uh, it's really kind of how they're, they're set up. And we could also do the multiplicities here. So if we go and add multiplicity, or click show multiplicity, notice this gives us four possible places for them. We really only need two. So we can get rid of a couple of these. And we have, uh, I believe it is nine digit buttons in our main window. So let's double count, or double check by counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Oh, yep, we've got zero as well. Uh, so zero, ten of those for every main window. So 10 to 1. And then also notice the direction. Uh, so these are arrows, and I like to call these diamonds fletchings. So you can think of the arrow tip as being pointing towards, um, and actually I have this one backwards. So let's turn it around. Which, You want to flip that, so actually, I'll just do it the cheap and dirty way. We'll just drag it around. There we go. Get them going the right direction. So main window is composed of 10 digit buttons. And we also have our operation button, which is very similar. also inherits from button and one of the things we can do with these inheritance relationships is if we start getting a lot of complexity uh, we can go ahead and just pull these lines together so as long as you can read and understand that these are both pointing in the same direction, that they're basically both the same style of arrow, that is okay. Uh, in fact, we might even stretch this one out and attach it on the back side. To really kind of emphasize that those are both inheriting from uh, that digit button, or the button class. Okay, and we have, I think, five operation buttons. One, two, three, four, five, six operation buttons. Oh yes, for clear. So we're going to have another composition relationship here. And you may have struggled because these like to snap uh, to the same point. You can actually turn off snapping uh, in... Is snapping hiding. Oh, I can't quite remember. Yeah, we'll just bring it down here. That way we can still show both our multiplicities. And so this one we have six to one. We can get rid of these extra multiplicities. Uh, okay, that should Finish that one. Then if we double well, operation button didn't have a XAML, so that's fine. We do have the operation enum, so we should probably add that. And we'll just do that as a enumeration. And if I remember right, they are addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and 
we'll get rid of the separator because technically an operation should only have a single box. Don't know why it defaults to that. Oh, and we also have none. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. Make sure that you use the same names. Add, multiply, subtract, and divide. And then we also assign values to these in the enumeration, so we need to assign them here in the UML as well. So that it's clear what those values are. And of course, operation button keeps track of one of those. Main window keeps track of one of those. But with the enumeration, we don't necessarily need to show a relationship, though there uh, arguably is one. So there we go. There's our calculator class. Um, that uh, really is what we'd be looking for for documenting uh, a XAML uh, project. Hopefully you find that helpful.